Welcome back to Trove One, everybody, and to Shed Talks. Only today we're not in the shed. Today we're going to talk about hitches, and particularly this lock and roll hitch. What it's for, and the things that I like and don't like about it, and my experience with it over the last, I think, 10 months since I installed it on our Suburban Camper. So the whole point of these hitches like this is more articulation over a traditional um, ball hitch. We've got articulation this way, this goes into here, so we've got articulation this way, and this rotates, so we've got articulation this way. So we've got three axes of articulation, which give us full rotation. I mean, this thing can completely roll over. The entire camper could roll over without maxing out the articulation, such as a typical ball, there's a max to the articulation. And when we had a traditional ball on this, we did max it out multiple times. In fact, we ended up bending one, the main steel plate on one of our hitches because we maxed it out with this camper at one point. Just a little bit, never had anything break, but we did, you know, we did have some minor issues with that. We installed this about 10 months ago, so we've got a lot more articulation. This is from Lock and Roll, and this, most of their hitches are rated for the same. This is, comes with the whole V um, portion here and all this, and then you get this separately. This is the vehicle side, and they've got, they've got several different ones to fit different trailers and different types of um, tongues. So this assembly is rated for, for off of Lock and Roll, 11,000 pounds of trailer, and 1,100 pounds of tongue weight, which I still don't know the exact tongue weight or overall weight of our camper. I believe the tongue weight is under 1,100 pounds and the camper is definitely under 11,000 pounds, but it's sufficiently rated and, you know, that should cover most trailers. Way more than most of your teardrops and on basic off-road trailers need. Most of those weigh 3,000 pounds or less. So the way this hooks up is pretty simple. You pull this uh, cotter pin out of here. You pull this out. These can rotate up, down. They can go all the way around. You back it up. This drops into the groove. These flip up and over, locking it in place with the pin. And you're hooked up. It's not too bad. Pretty simple. Just slide it in, drop it in. Sounds really simple. It's a little bit trickier to get it hooked up, though. So what I immediately found when I first put this on versus a standard ball, a standard ball, you can get it over it. You can be off a little bit. You can man maneuver it, finagle it, and get it to go on. This, you really have to be lined up very well. You've got to be very straight. Everything here has to be lined up very straight. If, if it's a little bit cockeyed and it can't slide down in here evenly, it won't work. So it definitely is harder to get this lined up than a traditional two inch ball but it's not that bad. It takes a little while to get used to. You make a few more trips unless you got a backup camera, which I do not, but it is a little bit more difficult than a standard ball to get hooked up, but it's not that bad. You just gotta get used to it. So like I said, we've had this hitch on here for about 10 months. We've run a lot of trails, a lot of roads. We've put a lot of miles on it since then. We use this trailer. We're, we're weekend trippers. We go out frequently on the weekends, but we've pulled this through a lot of stuff. We really put it through its paces. The main issue that I've found that's very minor, but it has been a problem, this main bolt right here that holds this onto this, where this swivels, there's a little keeper right here that kind of holds all that in place. But this nut on the bottom 
It is a lock nut, but it tends to get loose. And the whole hitch will do this right here. Now, there needs to be a little bit of play there, just, just like a hair, so that, you know, you don't want it clamped down so that it can't swivel, but it, it shouldn't be that loose. And I just have to periodically tighten that nut up a little bit. Now, I'm gonna take it off, put some Loctite on it, so I shouldn't have that issue anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and put some good Loctite on there, tighten it back up to where it's supposed to be, and we'll see if that helps. But I have had to tighten that multiple times as it's slowly gotten loose. So one other minor issue that I've begun having just here recently is when I slide this out, these aren't spinning around. They're wanting to catch a little bit more than they used to. Things just, I don't know why. I may just need a little bit of grease on here, maybe some fine sandpaper and sand down some, some rough spots. But they're just not rotating as freely as they used to. Not a huge deal. Another thing I actually just noticed today when I was getting ready to do this video and kind of looking at the condition of everything, these grooves right here, and I really can't show this on camera, but right here on the very bottom, there's actually a little bit of a lip that's been smushed out just from the weight of the trailer. Zaya, what are you doing? Are you stuck on the ladder? Can you get down? I hit my head on the... So, as I was saying, right down here in the bottom of the U, it's been smushed out just a little bit, and these actually right there catch on it just a little bit. I'm sure that's just, you know, that's just standard use. There's a lot of weight on it. It's bouncing up and down. It's riding in there. I mean, there's not really any play in that once this is locked in. There's really no play in there. But over time, that's going to wear down. So I'm going to take a file probably and just take that little bit of a lip off, and that might help my plates that are having issues spinning around here. There's a child in the middle of our um, set here. Actually, there's a couple, but this one's like right in the way. So one other thing I just noticed today that I'm actually going to have to fix is right in here. There's this triangular cross piece here. And on this side, if I can show it to you, the weld, there's a weld underneath here, right here. And that has actually broke loose. So that piece is no longer welded on that side at all. This side is still welded. Doesn't look like that weld was very good, I'm gonna say. It just, just from what I can tell looking at it, doesn't look like it got very good penetration there. So I will redo that weld. No big deal, fairly simple. Glad I noticed it though. I don't know that that will really affect anything. Um, I guess this could spread or collapse in a little bit. I guess it would spread because it can't collapse because that piece is still in there. But either way, I'm going to fix that. Glad I noticed it. I'm going to fix that real quick and then it should be good to go. Other than those things, I've had no issues with this. I've been very happy with it. It's handled the camper fantastically. We've pulled it and used it a ton. It's been a great hitch and it's done exactly what we got it for, which was to give us a lot more articulation. I've never had any kind of binding or any type of issue like that. It articulates and gives us everything we need there. So I'm going to put some Loctite on it, do a little bit of filing on the one spot, and re-weld that one little bracket across there. And uh, we'll run it for a lot more miles and see how it goes. You can get one of these from Lock and Roll. That's Lock, letter N, Roll. This is not sponsored. I paid for this. I've never talked to these people. It's just what I bought, and I thought I'd do a review on it because I've been using it, and I've been using it with a pretty pretty heavy camper so um you can take my opinion with a grain of salt but that's what i think of it Saya. and uh i'm gonna go rescue a kid so thanks for watching we'll see you next time